Sunday, August 7th, 2016. We'll be here for the next two hours. I want to start out with a four-minute report that just collates admissions of how they stole the election from Sanders, how they stole other elections, and then Obama responding to InfoWars and Trump uh, in a press conference he gave late Thursday before going to Martha's Vineyard. And then when we come back, uh, we're, as promised, starting to burrow into the actual data. We're going to prove to you about the private secret consortium that decides who wins elections. And it's been the same group since the 1960s. Uh, this is all coming up. This is what President Obama doesn't want you to know about. He slipped up big time in his press conference. This is a huge opportunity. Here's the report. Mr. President, uh, repeatedly now, uh, Donald Trump has said that this election will be rigged against him, uh, challenging really the, the core foundation of our democratic system. Uh, uh, can you promise the American people that, that this election will be conducted in a fair way? And are you worried that comments like his could erode the promise public's we can have free health faith in the outcome of the election? And, and if he does win, given that you've just declared him unfit, uh, what will you say to the American people? Well, at the end of the day, it's the American people's decision. Uh, I have one vote. I have the same vote you do. I have the same vote that uh, all the voters who are eligible all across the country have. Uh, I've offered my opinion, but ultimately it's the American people's decision to make collectively. Uh, and if somebody wins the election and they are president, then my constitutional responsibility is to peacefully transfer power to that individual and do everything I can to help them succeed. Um, it, it is, uh, I, I don't even really know where to start on answering this question. Uh, of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? <laughs> the federal government doesn't run the election process. States and cities and communities all across the country, they're the ones who set up the voting systems and the voting booths. And uh, if Mr. Trump is suggesting that there is a conspiracy theory that is uh, being propagated uh, across the country, including in places like Texas, <laughs> uh, uh, where... Typically, it's not Democrats who are in charge of uh, voting booths. Um, that's ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense. And I don't think anybody would take that seriously. Uh, now, we do take seriously, as we always do, our responsibilities to monitor and preserve the integrity of the voting process. If we see signs that uh, a voting machine or system is vulnerable to hacking, then we inform those uh, local authorities who are running uh, the elections that they need to be careful. Uh, if we see jurisdictions that are violating uh, federal laws uh, in terms of equal access and uh, aren't providing ramps for disabled voters uh, or are discriminating in some fashion or are otherwise violating civil rights laws, then the Justice Department will come in and uh, take care of that. But this will be an election like every other election. And, you know, I, I'm, uh, I think all of us at some points in our lives have played sports or maybe just played in a, in a schoolyard or a sandbox. And sometimes folks, if they lose, they start complaining that they got cheated. Uh, but I've never heard of somebody complaining about being cheated before the game was over. <laughs> or before the scores even tallied. So uh, my, my suggestion would be, you know, go out there and uh, try to win the election. If Mr. Trump is up 10 or 15 points uh, on election day and ends up losing, then you know, maybe yeah, he can raise some questions. Okay, we're going to leave it right there because you just stepped in it with that statement about maybe then he could raise some questions, didn't you, Lord Obama? Thank you for joining us on this live Sunday worldwide broadcast, the seventh day of August, 2016. Now, I'm going to be completely open with everyone, as I always am. The evidence of total orchestrated fraud against the American people and against our voting process 
is so completely butt naked and so incredibly overwhelming that when I came up here today and did basically hours of research last night and this morning and, 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 and hours of work here today to present to you what I'm about to cover, I started having an anxiety attack about 30 minutes ago. And by the way, I've never had anxiety attacks in my whole life. But, but shortness of breath, uh, almost panicking. And the reason I tell you that is because this is what you're supposed to do when you come face to face with total criminality. Your body has a response that it wants to do something about it. And that's been described by police officers, no matter how seasoned they are, they open a trunk up and there's a dead kid with maggots all over them. You know, they have an anxiety attack. They start throwing up right there on the spot. That is a normal response when you go down in somebody's basement uh, and you pull up the floorboards and there's 15 dead bodies. And it's the instinct. It's the will to not just take corruption like it's no big deal and accept it that separates free societies from enslaved societies. Because you can say what you want about the United States and its history, but we strove and led the world, along with England, on ending slavery. We strove and created the most patents, the most inventions, the, 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 the lowest taxes, the most innovation. That's why we were so special and people wanted to come here. And we're seeing that reversed. We're seeing that being dismantled today. Now, I already knew all the information I'm about to present. But it's kind of like having an old dusty photo album in your closet up on the top shelf. And every few months you're digging around in the closet and you see it up there on the shelf. But why don't you pull down the old photo album? Because you know you're going to be crying when you see grandma and grandpa and or maybe a brother or sister you lost, or you see photos of the family at the beach back in happier times. And that's really what my job's like, and I'm not complaining about it. I knew all this in the last 21 years on air, 25 years politically involved. When I first got politically involved, witnessing election fraud that was even in the newspapers and confirmed here in Travis County, Austin, Texas. Oh, yeah, even then I caught election fraud with my cohorts, and we challenged it at the state level, and they admitted fraud but still certified it, still certified the Republican primary against Pat Buchanan. I witnessed it. And when I sat there in the last few weeks recollating all the election fraud data, recollating who runs the elections, recollating how they stole it from Bernie Sanders and tried with Trump, some of it was just flashbacks from six months ago. Other stuff was 20 years ago, and... I was up here today shooting special reports that we're going to be putting out that I know have a giant effect. I mean, the White House Media Matters came out and said 48 hours after Jones comes out with his message to Trump, Trump comes out word for word and says, I only won because of landslides. They tried to steal the primary from me. They did from Sanders. Uh, they're going to try to do it again. We're going to be exposing it. And we are going to be exposing it. We're going to be putting the reports out and the research out. And then you're going to see that push the American people. And I'm not going to get into inside baseball here, uh, but I think it tells you everything you need to know about Donald Trump. That he's getting his research and info from the grassroots and proven sources and not from multinational globalist organizations uh, that are basically advising Hillary Clinton. And, 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 the, and the facts we roll out, the facts we, we expose are incontrovertible. So I'm not, again, tooting our horn here. I am just making the announcement to all the new viewers and radio listeners that InfoWars isn't playing games. And when you are hearing this information, you are getting next level, absolute cutting edge intel. Now, I, I want to just play this short mashup because we played what the president said earlier. I want to play the short mashup dealing with election fraud, just with the current stuff that happened the last few months. Interspersed with Obama's speech Thursday where he said, now listen, this stuff comes out of Texas, this conspiracy theory. Texas runs its elections and they're Republicans. So why are you saying there's fraud? As if we're not talking about the national election in Ohio and Florida and other battleground states where we know the Democrats have been engaged in massive fraud.
and Republicans have too. I remember exposing that. We just cover it like we see it. But in front of the whole world, you saw Bernie Sanders win more than 10 states, like New Hampshire and like California. And they said, sorry, it doesn't matter, you won. The super delegates aren't going to be for you. We even interviewed some of the super delegates who go, yeah, it doesn't matter if he wins the popular vote, we're putting Hillary in. And you saw the Republicans try that. So see, they've miscalculated and tried to hide this in plain view. Obama has come out and said, don't worry, if he's, if he, if he's 15 points ahead in polls, but he loses, then he's got a case of fraud. The same people that run the polls are the same ones that will be calling it. And I'm going to prove that in one moment. You understand AP and Reuters and CNN and CBS and ABC and NBC run the private secret organization that announces the winners. And I knew all this, but I was going back over just how real it is and how it's been the same group since 64 and how they keep changing the name to confuse the public. It is amazing. So you're going to discover that coming up in the next segment. But first, here's Obama. Mr. Trump, I'm not going to lay things out here that you don't already know. It's last Saturday. But I am going to ask you to seriously think about making the issue of Hillary's election fraud in the primaries one of the central issues to defeating her in November. And I'm telling you, November 8th, we better be careful because that election is going to be rigged. First of all, it's rigged. And I'm afraid the election is going to be rigged. I have to be honest. And I hope the Republicans are watching closely or it's going to be taken away from us. America teaches everybody how to live in, quote, democracy. But what? You actually believe that they have democratic elections there? If Hillary steals the nomination and then she openly is engaged in chicanery and things don't add up with Trump, you have to say it must be thrown out. Hillary Clinton, what Debbie said from the start. Hillary Clinton has had every advantage, every break given to her from the very beginning by this Democratic Party. It has been rigged. The political parties choose their nominee, not the general public, uh, contrary to popular belief. Then why <laughs> Again, bother holding the primaries? That's a very good question. It is clearly the case that when given truth serum, Debbie Wasserman Schultz vastly prefers <laughs> Hillary Clinton to be the nominee, obviously, and to the extent there are things that can be done institutionally and largely to facilitate that outcome, they are being done. When did the press see it as their role to, to protect the prerogative of the powerful? Actually, I think that's part of it. And we're not going to recognize Queen Hillary if there's evidence of fraud. And guess what there is? She stole the nomination. Of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? How would the party pick a new nominee? Today is the day. They're really thinking about maybe getting him off the top of the ticket. He now looks increasingly like the kamikaze candidate. Uh, an implosion, the likes of which I have never seen. The biggest problem we have is we have a very dishonest media. Uh, if Mr. Trump is suggesting that there is a conspiracy theory that is uh, being propagated, across the country, including in places like Texas, um, that's ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense. And I don't think anybody would take that seriously. There you go, folks. Now, when we come back, we're going to tell you who announced all those states that Bernie won for Hillary. It's the same group that's going to announce the winner coming up in November. They don't want you to know the name of this group. And what you're about to hear, if you get the info out, we'll destroy them. We are having the biggest effect out there as a counter-narrative of the New World Order. Because we understand history and sociology and anthropology and, and, and who the New World Order are, what they're doing, what their plan is. But as I basically got into it earlier, it's like, because I did this actually Friday, you pull down some of those old family albums and man, when you see your old grandma that's been gone for a decade, or you see your old grandpa that's been gone 20 years, and you think about how sweet they were, you think about the things they said to you, how amazing it would have been to know them as a grown-up man or a grown-up woman. I don't mean 20-something years old. I mean as a 40, 50-year-old man. They were just so cool. My dad's dad, my mom's dad too as well, but my dad's dad was so, so manly without even trying to be. He was just like, 
walk in the room. Everybody would just turn around. It's just like the presence. And what would men like that do today? Probably nothing because they're so humble. They don't think of themselves as fighting a tyranny that's their own government. I mean, sure, my dad's dad was a B-17 pilot decorated in World War II, but again, that was directed by the government to go off and fight. And sure, he ran as a Republican and won for local state office, uh, you know, for part of uh, the Civil Rights Act. But so, so I guess he would have been politically involved and, and, and was. But what would the greatest generation do today face with what we see? I don't know if they were the greatest generation. I think 1776 might have been that. But I tell you, they're a hell of a lot better than what we've become. And I'm not knocking the average person, but on average, we become a bunch of slovenly people, culturally. We don't appreciate our heritage. We don't stand up for our birthright. We've been overrun by tyrants, by multinationals, by globalists. And so the last couple weeks, because I knew I had to do this, I had to make election fraud the central issue. I had to push with my contacts to get that done. I had to put the evidence together. We've already put out more than 10 articles, seven or eight big videos, special reports, and more is coming. And the good news is all that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men and women do nothing. We've been standing up. We've been speaking out. And it's become the number one election issue now is election fraud. And will they steal it from Trump? And that's a debate they can't win. Because we have the internal polling numbers, we have the fake polls they're putting out and the methodology of them, it's public, and we have the social media numbers, and we know Trump is conservatively 10 points ahead nationally. You add to that the closeted factor of a lot of people being scared to vote for him or admit they're voting for him because of political correctness. We're talking seven points, what most experts agree. We're talking 17-point super whopper wins. Now, there's Electoral College, obviously, and battleground states are more Democratic in some areas, like California and Pennsylvania. But if he doesn't win Florida, you know the fix is in. And we're not just going to sit here and let election fraud take place. And, and, and that's the main message that I've been getting at here. Now, next segment, because I want to have plenty of time, is when I'm going to come in with a focused live report to you. And I'm going to lay out who really puts out the fake polls and who is announcing the election. Because Obama really screwed the pooch when he said this at the end of his answer at the press conference at the Pentagon. When he said, oh, you know, election fraud, what's that? And then... Oh, well, if he's got 15 points ahead and then loses, then I'll, oh, the polls are what? Exactly. And we know your polls are as valuable as used toilet paper. Obama, here it is. If Mr. Trump is up 10 or 15 points uh, on election day and ends up losing, then, you know, maybe he, uh, he can raise some questions. That doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. I have you now. I uh, talked to someone close to Donald Trump two weeks ago, a source, a Trump source that cannot be argued with. And this individual told me he was very concerned about election fraud, and we had a long discussion about it. And he concurred with my analysis and what should be done about it. And I, and I said, we're going to put together the data, which I, I know they're already aware of, just as an augmented file, a, a HUMET briefing here in the resistance. And that's what this is. See, you don't go out and join some agency to be part of the cloak and dagger. You don't, you go there to be controlled and subjugated. When you join the Republic and the truth and take action, there isn't a uniform, there isn't little gold stars, there isn't... There's the fact you've actually joined a real fraternity of people that are going to fight for this republic to the end. And people know in that fraternity, I'm real. I'll never backed off. I've never given in, not to threats, not anything. And that's nothing really special, except in this day and age, I guess it is. But I want viewers and listeners to know something. If you want to join this fraternity, if you want to be part of this, 
All you got to do is start telling the truth and taking action. And whether it's at a very small level, at your local level, or in a big way, at the national level, it doesn't matter. All of it together will bring the New World Order down. You want to go up against the globalists? You want to uh, fight their tyranny? You want to experience it? They're waiting for you right now. And what's crazy is they don't have the spirit of liberty with them. They're afraid of us. And when we actually take the field, it's incredible. You will experience providence when they just fall down in front of you. The problem is good men never stand up, as Thomas Jefferson said. All that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men and women do nothing. And that's why they're panicking and putting out fake polls. Obama screwed up big time and hung his hat on the polls and said, oh, as long as they say Hillary's going to win, you don't question things. Well, guess what? We have the polls, and they're admitted frauds. They admit they're fraudulent. Now, the big secret of who runs the election is coming up. Thank you so much for joining us. Roger Stone will join us in the last 30 minutes with breaking news from all things election 2016 and planet Trump. We have a special report that has all the documentation. I'm going to go over a lot of it here. That's going to be up by tonight at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, exposing the private corporate consortium that announces who wins the elections nationwide. Because Obama, in his press conference, said two different things that were key. He said local governments announce who the winners are. And the media. And it's ridiculous why Republicans run places like Texas, but not battleground states. See, he, 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 total deception. Then he says... Look, if he's won about 15 points in polls, Freudian slip, because our numbers are he's about 15 points ahead, and then he loses, well, then he's got a point to make. The polls in AP and Reuters, Thompson Reuters, and NBC and, and CBS and CNN are all run by the same consortium that announces who the winner is. It's unbelievable. And I sit there, when I was at the RNC, I'd be talking to senators, congressmen, you name it, and they were like, how does that work? Yeah, the media, they lie, they announce another winner when it's not. And I'm like, it's Voter News Services. And then it was changed to this, and they're like, oh, okay, son, I like your show. I mean, I would sit there at the restaurant waiting for my plane with congresspeople, and they just didn't get it. And they weren't playing dumb. They didn't know. And so I'm not excited about the fact that, wow, InfoWars knows this and no one else seems to. It freaks me out. So before I get into the fraudulent polls, let's get in first. And then I've got some really exciting news dealing with landslide evidence uh, for Trump. Let's start with voter news services, okay? Now, I learned about this from the Collier brothers. They both mysteriously died Uh right after I started interviewing him in the mid-90s. And, of course, I've interviewed their daughter many times, so we should get back on. She's one of the top election fraud experts out there. And I've interviewed Bev Harris, who had the Hacking Democracy documentary on on uh, HBO. She's a Democrat, but but she'll admit both parties do it. And we're, and we're getting her back on soon. And remember, though, Obama said this doesn't exist. Well, let me tell you what does exist, okay? The Sun. This came up this morning. Now, this is from Wikipedia. You say, well, Wikipedia can have fake entries, whatever. This info, I know from my own research, is accurate. And it has links to a bibliography uh, where you can go see it for yourself. And there's other places where you can research voter news services. Films and books have been made. But it's so foggy and secretive, most people don't even know it exists. Kind of like the Federal Reserve is not federal. Most folks don't know it's a consortium of six banks. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over this for everybody. Voter news services was an exit polling consortium formed in 1990 by six major U.S. news media organizations. Its mission was to provide results for the United States presidential election so that individual organizations and networks would not have to do exit polling and vote tallying in parallel. Yeah, you don't have to have everybody check. Just have it magically announced by guys at the top of a building guarded by the CIA in New York. That's what happens. And then even Wikipedia with mainstream news links goes through every election being a fraud and computer glitches. And so it gets disbanded over and over again. And a new group gets formed basically every election, but it's the same group. 
<laughs> Let me read this to you. And it goes through each election, why they get disbanded. 2000, 2004, it goes right through it. It says in 2002, VNS intended to make calls in the November U.S. Congressional and Senate elections. It attempted to use a computer designed by VNS by an outside contractor to do this. A system failure always happens, occurred in the computer on election night, making quick delivery of data impossible. In fact, collecting and delivery, the data took 10 months. So no one knows why it got announced, but it turned out to be a fraud. In January 2003, the Voter News Service was disbanded, largely because of failures in 2000, 2002, VNS editor director criticized the decision as making VNS a scapegoat. Then it goes on. In 2004, presidential election, a new organization called National Election Pool. Guess what? They just changed the name again. We're going to get to that in a moment. Was set up by the same organizations in 1963. JFK was not cold. And within a month... They had created this AP polling service that would announce who'd won. That got a bunch of heat for election fraud. So then they created other groups and names, always run by the same people. In 1990, it's Voter News Services. By 2003, it's National Election Pool, and then the same group. We don't know when, but the last few years change the name again to Edison Research. <laughs> so so you want to know when they said the AP met the day before the California primary, the key final primary, and decided Bernie Sanders, you know, AP, why AP says it goes to Sanders is the headline, AP. And they said, oh, we went to a superdelegate meeting in a rich guy's house, and they just said they weren't going to go for Sanders. So it didn't matter. So we asked who was for Sanders, who wasn't, and then collated it, and it was Hillary winning by 60-something percent. And then that was in the New York Daily News. In fact, I covered it Friday. Maybe you guys can grab it out of the pile. But, but I mean, I, it's crazy. It's the same group. Now, when I say Reuters is involved, uh, Thomson Reuters has this contract to do polling with AP. And, then th and that's the Brits that are basically running that. You know how against tr uh, Trump they are, the British government. So Obama, we played the clip earlier. Maybe I'm putting you guys on the spot, but can you like... It's, it's a three-minute clip, it's like in the middle there, where he, next segment will play it, where he says, well, I mean, we got local governments are announcing who's the winner. And every time, it comes out a month later, oh, really, this person won Ohio, but VNS said it was this, or, or, or whatever, the, Edison said it was this, or voter pool said it was this, and it's just like, it's all just magicians distracting you with the pretty lady in the lingerie. And then you're like, wow, where'd the rabbit come from out of the hat? Well, there's a table with a trap door in it. And I'm just here going, look, here's the trap door. Here's the rabbit. Here's how they work. Here's how they do it. And then it gets worse. There it is. AP count. Clinton has delegates to win Democratic nomination. Day before. Then they just give it to her. And then match the numbers up, even though Sanders won. Because that'd be embarrassing. The AP met the night before to announce the winner. And then Trump dares talk about it, so he's the big cook. Now, let's continue here. Let's go over this. This is the good news. I'm going to cover this in the next segment. Shock poll, Reuters, radically changes methodology to favor Clinton. And the polls showed a 17-point swing. And you know why it did? Because... I've got a copy of it right here. Let me let, let me show TV viewers. This is from Reuters. And AP, they're all doing the same crap. They sampled 650 Democrats that they knew were Democrats when they called them versus 496 Republicans. So that's 154 more Democrats were polled to then give her that lead. From her behind to her ahead. I mean, and they, they put it down. So used to, they'd hide it and get caught. So now they just put it there like it's no big deal. This is how con artists operate. And it's poll after poll after poll. Shock poll. Pat Cadell blasts Reuters back rigging polls to show Clinton up. Oh, yeah, they're also going back to old polls. And changed, and was, but now, despite all the fraud, Reuters baffled as Clinton's lead over Trump suddenly evaporates using the same methodology.
She's only three points ahead of Trump, meaning he's like 15 ahead of her right now. Wow. Wow. We're going to come back and give you the biggest news yet that shows a landslide for Donald Trump. Now, that's in the real world, though. In fantasy land, huh. <laughs> In the last week, I've seen comments on Infowars.com in the comment sections I've seen on YouTube. I've seen emails that come in, and you think it's a joke. And it's like, Alex, why aren't you talking about the cross-human animal clones that they've just legalized this week? It's like when people stop me on the street and go, why aren't you talking about the private Federal Reserve? Uh, it'd be like calling in today and saying, why aren't you talking about election fraud? Or why aren't you wearing a navy blue sports jacket? I am wearing a navy blue sports jacket. It's like the more you expose stuff, there's like this weird mind control where you're not exposing it. And then I've had family and friends and people on the street go, Alex, have you heard? Human animal clones are being made. And I'm like, oh my God, they've, they've put the dosage of that out on the news to the point where people that are in a sleep state are now being told They've been had human animal clones for 30 years. They're just getting ready to show everybody. I was talking to one engineer about how they have doors on the sides of the cows and they just open them up and just put the seedling humanoids in, but they have no rights because they're part cow, so the cow doesn't reject it, part human. And they can grow them up to like 20, 30 pounds and then they harvest them. And I've been harping on this for like 18 years since I learned of it. And, and yeah, it was in the AP this week. That's why everybody's talking about it. Uh, you know, U.S. government legalizes human-animal hybrids. So it's like, oh my gosh! It's uh, did you hear? Uh, 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 Alex, it's called. It's called. It's just some voter news service that uh, announces who the. I mean, it's crazy. Yes, I know the Federal Reserve is private. Yes, I know they're creating human-animal clones. Yes, I know they're geoengineering us, spraying aluminum dioxide on us, and radioactive isotopes. I don't know the full program. I don't know exactly why they're doing it. I know the trees are dying all over the planet. Okay, I, I don't know who these people are. I don't understand it, but I've reverse engineered it, and yes, I know. And let me tell you, they're bad news. Yeah, it's a NIH moves to lift moratorium on animal-human chimera research. <laughs> Maybe they'll lift the ban on building automobiles. I mean, it's like, it, it, my point is this stuff's going on everywhere. And I'm not tooting my horn. I don't get the cognitive dissonance where we do exit polls in Democrat areas and eight out of 10, and I'm, it's more than that sometimes, you can't find Hillary supporters. She has like 500 people on average at her rallies. Trump has 30,000, Sanders has 20,000. I don't need to know they're fixing polls to know this woman's not popular. You go, look, and they admittedly are fixing it. They think we're so dumb. They go, yeah, we poll 15% more Democrats than Republicans and then say who's going to win the election. Uh, what? And then I harp for at least 18 years. Because I, I read one BBC News article on air about how they've been cloning humans and animals, splicing them for decades. And then all these white papers got mailed to me by listeners, you know, that was in, you know, d d genetic research firms and stuff. And then I just realized, stop talking about it. The public doesn't believe you. 25 years ago, they had part spider, part goats at U.S. facilities all over the United States creating body armor. And still, if I talk about it, they have national news say I'm insane. So I, I can't even people to admit the Federal Reserve's private. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I mean, the election is admittedly staged. They have this st private consortium that announces who the winners are, the same folks that announced who the winners were in the primaries. The difference was Trump didn't buy it. People knew he was winning. They had to back off. Wow, somebody stands up and they've got to back off. Wow, that's incredible. But let's play Obama where he really stepped in and then, and then the big news. When he says, hey, Locals tabulate who the winners are. No, they don't. Voter News Services does. The counties send it to them at a coordinator at the state level. And then no one challenges it. And Voter News Services, again, was the old name. Uh, then they changed it to National Election Pool. And now they've changed the name to Edison Research. It'll be a new name tomorrow. You know. 
trying to hide this. But let's play Obama. Here it is. Of course, the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? <laughs> the federal government doesn't run the election process. States and cities and communities all across the country, they're the ones who set up the voting systems and the voting booths. And uh, if Mr. Trump is suggesting that there is a conspiracy theory that is uh, being propagated uh, across the country, including in places like Texas, uh, uh, where typically it's not Democrats who are in charge of uh, voting booths, um, that's ridiculous. That doesn't make any All right, sense. Let's stop there. I don't think anybody... And he goes on to say if he loses by, you know, if he's winning by 15 in polls but loses, then there's an issue. The polls are run by the same people that announce who wins, and they're admittedly giving a 15-point lead. See, he gives it away. He knows the methodology, the orders that have gone out. Hillary's emails have been public for a month, a little less, like 25 days, and they admit those are her emails. They change the subject and say it's the Russians. So, you know, oh, it's, it's bad. But no, they go, yeah, that, okay, that's our emails. That's Washerman Schultz. Debbie Washerman Schultz saying to AP and Reuters and CNN and everybody else how to engage in deception, how to shut everybody down, and how to have Bernie Sanders blamed for Trump rallies because they have Hillary people dress up like Bernie Sanders supporters and then go start a riot. Why do you do that? You can blame it on Trump. You can blame it on Sanders. Hillary's outside of it to make sure those two groups don't get together after Hillary steals the nomination. This is called chess, folks. It's called Machiavelli. It's not hard to think three moves ahead. I can think 50 moves. I don't understand. You can do it, too. If you just start trying, you can do it. It's actually your brain's designed to do it. But you have to want to do it, and then you'll be no longer blind. But the globalists want to keep you in the dark so they can control you. I don't think of humanity as like mushrooms. You keep in the dark, and you feed them horse manure. But you have to decide to not act like a mushroom. And I'm not condescending to our audience. I mean all the new listeners and the media people and all these delusional folks in the establishment that think you're going along with a system that's screwing over humanity, that you're going to get ahead that way. That's why society's getting so bad. So in his answer, he tells you everything. They're going to try to steal the election with 15-point skewed numbers for Hillary. They've been caught. And he just told you how they're doing it. Trump's at least 10 points ahead, folks. At least. People are so sick of the establishment, they would elect a turnip other than Hillary. Everybody knows that. Now, I, I, I haven't gotten to this yet, but, but I'm, I'm going to get to it in the next segment. And when I saw this, I'm like, why wasn't I thinking of that? Because that's totally true. Gateway Pundit did it. It's a Breitbart article up on Drudge, DrudgeReport.com. Social media patterns show Trump is looking at a landslide victory. And, and you know, we have 3 million followers on Facebook alone on our channels. Uh, 150 million. Or 100, it's it's going to be a billion views on just one channel on YouTube. 1.5 million subscribers on one channel. The point is, is that I know social media. And this is absolutely true. In fact, these numbers they get aren't even the best ones to get. I'm going to have Paul Watson or somebody actually go to the other social media and show you the real numbers. I'm not, I'm not knocking this article. It's just it's much worse than this. Hillary on her live streams has a few thousand people watching. She has less likes on Facebook with Trump with them gaming Facebook, blocking everything, admitting they're blocking it, blocking Google, won't even list him as a presidential candidate on Google. And he still has, in many cases, five to ten times more than Hillary does, and if you add that together from past elections or other countries, that's an indicator of popularity. Kind of like you go to TripAdvisor, something's got 3,000 five-star reviews, and everyone hands down says it's the best. It is the best. So TripAdvisor is known to have real reviews. Uh, it's human. It's, it's a knowledge of the crowd. It's, it's just like if you go to Yelp and, and it has one, zero stars, boy, you better not go there. You're going to get food poisoning every time. If something's got five stars, it's going to be incredibly delicious if you've got a bunch of reviews. One or two, you can't trust it. That's the same thing. Donald Trump in social media has four and a half stars. Hillary has one star. Who's the winner? Duh. You pull into a town. You don't know the restaurants. You don't have your internet's not working. Remember the old days where we had internet. You're going to try to decide where you're going to go eat. Which which restaurant has overflow 
cars. The other one has nobody parked. Like, That's food poisoning over there. I'm going to go stand in line to get the best food. And you get there, it's all, it's incredible. It's human. Just like InfoWars is exploding because it's, it's the real deal. By the way, we got free shipping that ends tomorrow on everything at InfoWarsStore.com. We got 40% off on Brain Force, the incredible nootropic, 30% off on DNA Force, and on our Vitamin Mineral Fusion Fruit Punch, great for kids and more. Your purchase supports the broadcast, 30% off there. InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. But most importantly, tell your friends, your neighbors, your family to tune into the second hour. It's 70 seconds away. 877-789-2539. Your calls are coming up as soon as we come out of the next segment. That's right, the big illusion. Gateway Pundit, social media patterns show Trump is looking at a landslide victory. Absolutely. It's crazy to sit there and watch the listeners come across. And we get ratings from our AM and FM stations around the country. The last time we got from a ad agency because we don't buy the book as they call it. we don't subscribe to our stations that you know are, are getting the ratings and even our local affiliates get the ratings you're not supposed to share it with us but we can go to a consortium and actually get the numbers that the ad agencies have and it was 385,000 people every 15 minutes listening on terrestrial radio now that is only i'd say terrestrial radio now is maybe half our audience on a daily basis maybe i'm not bragging i just want you to know the success of InfoWars. An hour, it was over 600,000 original listeners. I mean, the top CNN shows don't even have that. It's all just smoke. What's the word they use in Wolf of Wall Street? Fugazi? Fugazi? It's all just like farts in the wind or something. It's a total illusion. We'll be back. Stay with us. Your call straight ahead. It has nothing to do with race. John Paul Jones first hauled it up. It had been a flag used in the militia early on as just as a rattlesnake saying don't tread on me the original one is a rattlesnake across the flag and they just said the obama people said it was racist and evil and they said you couldn't have it and and finally the head of the navy came out and said no you you can have the flag it's a navy flag but that just shows how the globalists are out to get this country they're out to demonize every symbol we've got because they want to fully capture this nation and use it to exploit it against the world. And the United States is falling to world government. It's been a long coup, long-term program to fully get the country under their control. They're very close. If Hillary gets in, four to five more Supreme Court justices. And they know people are waking up, folks. They want to get this job done now. They'll ship $400 million illegally to Iran. They'll make deals where Iran can have atomic weapons, basically. They will do all sorts of scams. They will engage in all sorts of corruption. And they won't try to steal an election while they are stealing it. The good news is Trump is ignoring most of his advisors and listening to other people that second what he already knows. And people say, oh, Trump used to be nice to Democrats. He lived in New York. It doesn't matter. I'm not a Republican either. I'm a patriot. He is a populist and... Now everything's clear to me. Trump is either George Washington part two or he's the devil. Because if he ends up getting into office and betraying us, globalists don't act like he does. Globalists don't reach out to liberty movement. Globalists don't say the things he said because it, 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 it puts the ideas out there that, that can't be put back in a box. We're going to go to your phone calls. Just remember that we are listener supported. We sell high-quality products uh, that fund our operation. Sponsorship is secondary. Our network and local affiliates fund themselves with that. It's a partnership. But we're funded by you buying water filtration systems, non-GMO seeds, uh, Hillary for Prison shirts, Molon Lambe shirts, Bill Clinton rape shirts. It's all free speech. 40% off Brain Force, amazing uh, nootropic. A lot of big discounts in today and free shipping ends. And we now have free shipping on orders $50 or more, but this is free shipping, period. InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Uh, and guys, I, I, I'm sorry, my computer, I didn't punch up the calls. Let me, let me punch those up so I can take some calls. There they are. We've got O'Brien and Marilyn and Chris and Brad and Bobby and Robin and Dylan and Kevin and a bunch of others coming in. Kevin says he has an idea how to beat Hillary and Dylan wants to talk about how Trump can get through to millennials. Well, millennials have to decide they don't know it all. Uh, I mean, if they really think Hillary cares about them, just let them have her. 
Uh, that's why it gets rid of millennials, slap them upside their snot-nosed heads. A lot of millennials are either super awake, and I don't need to, I don't, I don't need to slap them upside their heads. But, but the ones that are trendies, they got daddy and mommy issues, so just let them, let them just enjoy themselves. They want to worship that old war criminal Hillary? Let them do it. Doesn't matter. They're going to try to rig the election. We, we've already got the election. Question is now, will they be able to steal it? We need to get through to those snot noses. I found not kissing people's ass is the way to get them to wake up. I mean, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink. Uh, we got uh, Chris in Georgia, Trump voter fraud, civil emergency after the election. Yeah, they really got a lot of preparations for that. I'm not saying that's coming, but they're, they're definitely activating their red brigades or cop killer groups and all the rest of it. And if I get one more email going, oh, yeah, you worship the police. I've never supported police state or bad cops. I don't support civil war funded by George Soros and shooting anybody in the back who's innocent. And we've got, uh, again, O'Brien in Maryland, Trump and election fraud. Let's talk to uh, Chris first in Georgia. Thanks for holding, Chris. You're on the air. Yes, hello, Alex. How are you? Good, brother. Go ahead. Yes, um, what I was saying about the um, the voter fraud is he Obama knows is that we're aware of it, and he is aware that the people know about civil emergencies. So my question to you is, what do they have now? They don't have many weapons to deploy. Well, look, our military has been trained the last seven, eight years to go after gun owners, veterans, patriots. We first got the secret documents. No one believed it for a week. Ron Paul called me and said, is that really real? And I said, you've known me like 15 years. You, th you think it's real? I said, I, I, the FBI is actually trying to interview me over how I got it. And, of course, it came out later. They said, okay, those documents are real. And then now that's a household known fact. Uh, again, other media got the documents. No one had the will to put it out. I mean, I... <laughs> I feel pretty insecure over the fact that I'm like up there at the top when it comes to Wavos and other people aren't. That actually scares me. Uh, but the good news is trying to train the military to attack the American people has actually woken the military up. But I mean, there are troops here for civil unrest. Are you saying there aren't? No, not that, Alice. What I'm saying is there are troops, but what I'm saying is the people are more powerful than the military. We have more guns than the government. That's what I'm trying to say is, so he knows it's gonna backfire. No, I hear you, I appreciate your call. Listen, it won't, it, it's not about who has the most guns. It's who has right on their side, who has the will to fight and to not listen to propaganda and to sustain the mission. So, yes, we have more guns than the military. And yes, if, if we fought back against a military takeover long-term, we'd win. But we don't need to because, on average, no one is more awake than the military. That's why they tried to purge the leadership. So I'm glad you brought that up. It was really a very, very deep question. Um, Obama's going to count on the military to do this. They're going to stage, watch, watch for it, false flags against the military with a narrative that makes the liberty movement look bad. Thus then turning the public who supports the military against the liberty movement. See, in military, you don't just have two mass forces that go together. You, you look at the angles of that. And, and, and I could teach a 50-year course on this, so I'm not going to try to answer it here today. But we are winning in the info war. We don't want to get physical offensively. And we will only help the globalists chewing up the military in a civil war. Or the police, for that matter. Look who's pushing for a physical confrontation. is George Soros and Obama. Because that's one of the only hopes they've got. Let's go ahead and talk to O'Brien in Maryland. You're on the air. Yes, hi. Uh, I think that basically, basically Obama knows that basically everybody else is going, is, is basically waking up to what they're doing, and basically they're going to try, try and do something about it before the, before the election happens. Pre, pre uh something i can't remember the word but civil emergency yeah yeah well i mean all their preparations point towards that now now they, they may back off of it but they've been trying to start a civil war and they've been trying to start movements to burn down local cities so the feds can come in as angels with an already set up u.n force called strong cities as the good cop uh the good news is the police and military have been eating up what I say like it's mother's milk, not because they are stupid and just love me, but because they already match everything I say with what they've got. They take it next level with their inside info and then feed us back the information. And it's just an incredible 
QMAT loop here where, <laughs> I mean, if Obama and Soros want to make this move, I'm, <laughs> I'm your huckleberry, baby. I appreciate your call. And that doesn't mean myself physically will do great during the first wave of this. I'm not worried about it. I just, <laughs> if I was the globalist, I'd really be backing off right now. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call here. Uh, let's talk to Kevin in West Virginia. Kevin, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, how are you doing today? Good, brother. Go ahead. Here, here's my thought. We all vote absentee, and we all um, we, we take a photocopy of our, of, of our absentee ballot, mail it in, so that way they can't rig it at the machines, and we all have a copy of who we voted for when we vote absentee. And then if they try to... Uh, I agree. I agree. It's moral authority. It, it, that's a great idea, but they can still absentee early on. But here, let me tell you what you need to do. This is my view. Everyone should start their own YouTube channel now. Don't wait till the week of, you know, three months from now, 90 days from now. Start now. Go out with a camera 50 feet away or whatever the law is in your state. Do exit polls there to show what the real number was at precincts. And then when they steal that precinct, just a few of those stories will blow up in their face and give us the moral authority for a recount, a Supreme Court thing. Of course, the Supreme Court would have gone for Trump, but now Scalia died, so now it's split. Oh, oh, stay there. I'm going to come back to you with a response back to that, then Roger Stone and more. Stay with us. He's with us for the balance of the hour via phone, picking his wife up from the airport on this live Sunday evening transmission. Roger Stone, former Trump campaign head, the guy that for decades has been urging Trump to run, longtime confidant, lobbyist, and friend for Trump. His former business partner, current business partner, obviously, is the head of the campaign. And it's an amazing time to be alive to see Trump come out against election fraud and to come out and point out that it's going on. Uh, and to see Reuters caught sampling 15% more Democrats than Republicans in their own methodology. I'm going to show that to TV viewers here in a minute, the graph from their own website. And then to say Hillary's 15 points ahead. Incredible. But now with that same methodology with a new Reuters poll, she's only three points ahead. I'm telling you, I can't find anybody that supports Hillary. I can't find her. I, I can't find them. Even in California, we did exit polls with Hillary, with Hillary supporters. Two out of ten, they were all for Sanders, 80%. So it's an epic time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. Shock poll, Reuters radically changes methodology to favor Clinton. There's another one, Pat Cadell blasts Reuters back-rigging polls to show Clinton up. And then we've got a shot of the poll methodology they're using. 650 Democrats to 496 Republicans. And then they've been caught saying the independents, 196, most of those are Democrats. So it's even above 15 points. I mean, this is desperate. And then Obama comes out Thursday as he is ready to leave and play golf for his 300th rounds as he's been in seven and a half years at Martha's Vineyard. And he says, don't worry, look, no such thing as election fraud. What is that? Doesn't exist. It's like Hillary and the Senate Armed Services Committee when they said, what about the Turkish ambassador in Benghazi? She goes, turkeys? What are turkeys? Thinking you don't know there's a country called Turkey. They're just betting you're an idiot. And then it's not just Reuters. It's AP, you name it, doing the same methodologies. And then we went and dug it up. Kennedy's killed. They set up this AP election bureau. Then by 1990, they call it Voter News Services, and it gets caught in every election in, in uh, stealing it. And now it's called National Election Pool until this year. Now it's got a new name, Edison Research. And that's the same group that met the night before Sanders had the nomination taken from him and said, oh, doesn't matter if he wins the California election, we're going to give it. To Hillary, and we have a super delegate on video bragging. Does it matter if he wins the popular vote? We're going to give it away. We have them jumping the shark, in my view, nakedly stealing elections, nakedly uh, trying to just hide it in plain view. Now, I want to get into all the other big issues where uh, he really is, where he sees Trump going, the latest dirty tricks, what's going on, what's going to happen next, when are we going to see the WikiLeaks emails that supposedly Assange, Julian Assange, says we'll have her indicted. Uh, I mean, she looks like, a, again, a dead person up there, a corpse sickle when she gives speeches. This is ridiculous. Uh, Roger Stone, thank you for joining us. Alex, delighted to be with you. Well, as you hurtle down the highway via cell phone, you just heard my three, four-minute intro. 
uh, I like you because I saw you in a quote in the 90s in some article. You said, listen, I only give out accurate leak info because the first time you give out this info, you'll never be you know, picked up by the press again. Everything you've told me has turned out to be 100%, I mean, just dead on. Unlike other pundits, I mean, that's why I love you. That's why they say you're dishonest and a dirty trickster because it's the opposite. Uh, the real synopsis, you heard what I just said. Is that wrong? No, I think it's essentially correct. I mean, it's just like the uh, the uh, when I had uh, dinner with uh, Nigel Farage during the Republican National Convention, he told me that the manipulation of the polls in Britain to make Brexit look less popular, less viable, was manifest, and they were doing it constantly, uh, and that it was a tactic that we needed to be prepared for here. And then, lo and behold, we've seen this trend. And it's not just Pat Cadell at uh, Fox, but it's Cliff Zukin with, uh, with the Rutgers Institute, uh, hardly a conservative. A number of these uh, liberal academics have pointed out the oversampling of, uh, of Democrats in these polls. And just to quantify what you said for laymen out there, some polls two years ago when Brexit started were 75% wanted out of the unelected EU. England never voted to be part of it. And by the time it happened, they only won by a few percentage points, creating that illusion that everybody's voting to stay to make people feel like they're wrong. Yeah, it's, uh, this is like a mass psychology. It's just like, as you know, the term conspiracy theory and conspiracy theorist was actually invented by the Central Intelligence Agency. We have a memo dated to about 1965, which instructs uh, the public relations people uh, and the uh, presumably the plants that the Central Intelligence Agency had throughout the press on their payroll to utilize that exact phrase uh, to try to discredit anyone who is questioning the, uh, the uh, results of the investigation of the Kennedy assassination. Uh, and it's, it's hurled at us constantly. Uh, I don't believe in conspiracies. I believe in the truth. Uh, and I, I also don't think the government ever tells us the truth, so why should they start now? Well, exactly. I mean, it's, it's now it's almost like a medal to be called that. And sure there's some kooks that make stuff up, but a lot of real journalists are called that. It, it, it doesn't work anymore. There it is, 1967, the CIA created the label conspiracy terrorist to attack anyone who challenges the truth and the narrative. You can link right through that Zero Hedge article to the declassification by Congress, as you said, from the early 1960s, right after Kennedy was killed. If you questioned all the witnesses and what they saw, you were a conspiracy terrorist. Exactly right. So it is, uh, you know, look, we, we've also seen disinformation taken to extraordinary levels this week. Let me give you several examples. Saying Trump's dropping ABC, out. Total horsemaner. ABC, ABC uh, the New York Times speculating about it. And this really came out of the Republican National Committee. It really didn't come out of the, uh, of the uh, 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 and then I think the Clinton people picked it up, the Clinton spin machine. It didn't come out of Hillary's bowels. It came out of Rince Priebus's butt. Exactly, because Priebus is a, is a Paul Ryan guy, and he was very, very upset when Trump uh, declined to endorse Ryan prior to the primary. Uh, like Ronald Reagan, you know, Donald, the policy was not to get involved in primaries. He can uh, support all these candidates uh, for the Senate in New Hampshire, or pardon me, in uh, Arizona or New Hampshire, after the primary. But as of this moment, Ryan, McCain, and Hyatt are not the nominees of the Republican Party. Well, let's talk about what you want to cover, because I always end up asking the questions. You've always got such great background inside baseball. And, and, and by the way, Roger, when I say you're so accurate, I mean, really, it's scary how accurate you are. You said four or five months ago when the whole Chicago thing happened that they were Hillary people dressed up like Bernie. She'd sent them. That's in the emails. You said, well, I have sources. But, man, I mean, it's hundreds of things that you have literally been the first to say, like the Koch brothers are going to give money to Hillary, and they did it. I mean, the Koch brothers are giving money to, 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 to uh, uh, you know, to the fake Texan and, and and they did it. I mean, you got some amazing sources. Well, uh, at this point, Alex, I've got to tell you, I think we're looking at a very close election. Uh, Trump is uh, is uh, now, I think, back solidly on message. And this next week uh, is his economic policy speech. This is the single most important speech of the campaign, uh, heavily shaped by Larry Kudlow. All right, StoneZone.com. You got the floor, Roger. When we come back, I'm turning the show over to you via cell phones. You drive down the highway in Florida. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones from Texas. He's got to go because his wife's just landed and she's coming in 10 minutes. I'll come back in the final segment, take your calls, and hit some other news. But uh, we're talking during the break 
because we don't pre-script these interviews. I was saying, what's on your radar? And he was saying, well, look at Iran, how her emails have now gotten this guy executed. Just an example how bad she is. Plus, they've sent in $400 million to Iran. They lied about. Now we've got Hillary basically falling down, having to be helped upstairs. Look, I don't hype stuff, okay? I've got plenty of real stuff to cover. I'm not saying she looks like a lunatic on the campaign trail because I want to act like she's got a problem. They're saying Trump's got mental problems. They're saying he's got health problems. They're saying his wife's a prostitute, an illegal alien, all this crap. The point is Hillary looks like a dying woman, and now DrudgeReport.com, we can put it up, because he has the big double photo, the panoramic, with her basically falling down, having to be held up. This just broke. We're going to put it up on Infowars.com as well. Uh, but, I mean, what's really going on, Roger? She looks like she's in bad shape. She's got holes in her tongue. She looks like she's got, I'm sorry, Down syndrome whenever she's out there with the balloons falling, like she's a three-year-old with a lobotomy. What's going on with Hillary? What's the inside intel, Roger? Yeah, I, I, New York Democrats who uh, who move in those social think, uh, circles uh, were very surprised even when she ran uh, because her health is not good. Bill's health is also not good. Uh, but I, I think she has had uh, she's either had a small stroke uh, or she has had some other disorder. The, those strange glasses she was wearing for a while kind of a tip off. Uh, she seems to be to have no stamina whatsoever. So I, I think it is probable that she's got very serious health problems. Remember in the debate when she was gone for 10 minutes? Yeah, very strange. Very, very strange. I think this is a liability. This is typical of what happens. I mean, why Bill and Hillary can't ride off into the sunset with their stolen hundreds of millions and their fame and be happy, I don't know. Uh, they're going back to the to uh, the table one time too many, and I think it's all going to catch up with them. They were able to suppress the major scandals that they have survived. Now those all get a nice, healthy review like they never happened. But, I mean, it's not like we're cherry-picking videos. I randomly watch her. In fact, I want to do this so we get more clips to always pay attention to. She acts freaking nuts everywhere. She, like, stomps around like she's crazed on a power trip. I mean, I, I, I mean, quite frankly, this is what you see in mental institutions. Well, if you go to the Clinton's war on women, I spent a lot of time talking about what I think are her dual personalities. On the one hand, uh, she uh, poses as this friendly grandmother, uh, uh, you know, with the phony smile. But then her real personality, she's a short-tempered, foul-mouthed, uh, abusive, uh, volcanic, angry, uh, greedy psychopath by the way you never brag about this but i did some research this weekend because I'm, I'm a roger stone fan because you're just an interesting guy and i went and read a bunch of old news articles online from you in the 70s 80s 90s i didn't know you you wrote a book about nixon i didn't read it it was a bestseller but i didn't know you were like his confidant for like 20 years and his best buddy and that you're the guy that helped bring him back out and get him on the news and get him to have these press meetings and stuff that's i want to interview you just about nixon sometime but comparing nixon to hillary uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Nixon had issues, had problems, but wasn't out to get America. But with Hillary, she really is out to get us. Well, when it comes to criminality, uh, Nixon would be rolling in his grave. The Clintons and the Obamas have gotten away with things that he could never have gotten away with. You may recall that the abuse of the IRS was one of the counts uh, in the uh, impeachment against him. Uh, also another count using the FBI to block an investigation. Well, the Clintons used the FBI to block the Travelgate investigation, and the Clintons, uh, as you know, uh, were, uh, 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 pardon me, the, the Clintons uh, had, the, uh, had the IRS harass uh, Kathleen Willey, Juanita Broderick. Obama's persecuted, just whole-scale industrial. So, so, oh, so bottom God. line, Nixon, Nixon, was he a good guy overall, or in, or in like one sentence, who was Nixon? Well, he was very complicated. He was an introvert in an extrovert's business. He was very disciplined. He was very buttoned down. He was very formal. Uh, he was brilliant. He, he understood the geopolitical game like nobody else, both American politics and international politics. Uh, he also played the accordion, the saxophone, the clarinet, the piano, the vi and the violin. Was Nixon out to get America? Was Nixon... No, 
was Nixon, Nixon a globalist? Was for, Nixon was out for peace. Uh, he wanted a peaceful, prosperous America. He was not a globalist. Uh, and that's why they got rid of him. He, Who is Hillary then, boiling her down? She's a, she's a psychopathic criminal. She is a, 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 where do we get the idea that someone becomes qualified to become president of the United States because they married some hillbilly who was successful in Arkansas politics and then became president in two three-way races? Let me remind you, no Ross Perot, no Bill Clinton. So uh, you can say, that, well, that's brilliant, but in, in both cases, he won with the minority of the vote. All right, we got four minutes left, and your wife's about to pull up there at the curb. You're, you know, they're at the airport in Florida. Um, other points that haven't been made. Where do you think Trump really is? What do you make of all these polls? What do you make of all the attacks? You say Trump is reorganized. Get ready, uh, Roger Stone. Four minutes. Give us, give us the intel. Uh, I think next week's the economic speech is absolutely vital, and that, and that uh, I know that it's a very well crafted speech. It includes. Uh, Trump's proposal for a corporate tax rate, cutting the rate of corporate taxes in the United States below that of China, uh, which would uh, bring millions of dollars, billions of billions. dollars of uh, business back home. Also in Virgin, taking this uh, almost $2 trillion that is off, uh, uh, out, out, pardon me, which is offshore and not being taxed. Uh, that is a, a major uh, uh, feather in our cap. He also would do something that Every president until Obama has done, and that is sweep the federal accounts. There's over a billion dollars sitting in the federal accounts that is unbudgeted and unused. It just sits there. Every other president has swept it at one point. Obama was the first to never do so. Wow. So before you go cut Social Security or Medicare or so on, uh, you, ought to, uh, you ought to go sweep these available funds to begin with. I love how Hillary spends it that he wants to, I saw her speech a few days ago in her press conference, he wants to give tax cuts to rich people. No, the rich people wrote it so they could move their money offshore. Trump's going to cut it so they bring the damn money back. I love how she spends that. Yeah, Trump is, you know, Trump is certainly not the, uh, the errand boy for Wall Street. Uh, every hedge fund manager in the world is upset about the fact that he could become president because, as you know, uh, he wants the hedge fund managers to be taxed the same as everybody else on Wall Street without the special tax treatment they have, in which they make billions, but they pay almost nothing. Sure, but also globalists set it up where they can move offshore and pay no corporate tax because it's so high here, no tax overseas. Trump cutting it incentivizes them to come back. Don't people get that? No, I, I'm afraid that they, they don't because they don't want to give his plan uh, an adequate hearing. I mean, it's uh, the chicken and egg problem. The media says his ideas are simple and he's never specific, but then when he is specific, it gets very little coverage. Uh, it's a terrific plan. As I said earlier, Larry Kudlow and Steve Moore, two of the supply-side pioneers, uh, were, were uh, deeply involved in formulating the policy. Uh, worked very closely with Donald himself. This is going to be the centerpiece of the campaign because if he does not put forward an aspirational message, uh, then uh, he, he won't be able to win. You're right. 60 seconds left. Vote. Other, other, other news, Roger. We're going to let you go. Uh, more and more evidence uh, of uh, cheating by the Clintons in the Bernie uh, Sanders uh, hoax, the, the takedown of Bernie. And the reason that's significant is, quite simply, if the Clintons will steal the election from Bernie, why wouldn't they steal it from from uh, uh, Donald? Is Obama not? I mean, Obama having to come out and respond to it. He doesn't like that. No, I don't think so. I, I, I think that I think that that made me certain when he said it's ridiculous. I immediately began to fear that that's exactly what we were going to have. Absolutely. Roger Stone, StoneZone.com. You've designed the new Clinton rape shirt, available at InfoWarsStore.com exclusively. Thank you so much. Also, uh, their war on women there to get a liberal. That, that's available at InfoWarsStore.com. Roger, thanks for the time. We'll talk to you this week. Thank you, Alex. Wow, there goes a real patriot. Your phone calls are three minutes away. Look, it'd be easy to sit on the fence, let Hillary get in. Audience would explode. But I'd watch my country decline. Trump gets in, he's not going to be able to fix everything. People say, oh, look, Trump got in. World depression. World depression's already coming. But I have to bet on who I think and who I've researched is the best person. I don't play politics. I don't sit around and say, oh, the smartest thing for me to do is this. I sit around and think, what is the best, most honest thing to do? 
oh, I can be more Machiavelli than anybody. But I want to try to make the world a better place, not sit there and like play all the corruption and the weaknesses of humanity and then direct it the way I want it to go. I'm just not a parasite. Not a hero, but not a parasite. And I'm asking other people, do you think the world's got a future, has a chance if we continue down this road? I think the answer is no. Uh, briefly, we've got a special that helps fund the operation. Free shipping on all the thousands of amazing items at InfoWarsStore.com. That ends tomorrow. And we have 40% off Brain Force, uh, the supplement, the amazing nootropic. 30% off DNA Force. Oh, go research that. We have a vitamin mineral fusion fruit punch with amino acids that is the best out there that we have personally worked with the biggest uh, top organic producer in the world to put out. That's 30% off and free shipping. Sign up for auto ship an additional 10% at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com. Okay, let's uh, go back to the phone calls. Kevin Stone was picking his wife up, so we you know, obviously had to let him go. Uh, but you were making a point about ideas of how to defeat Hillary. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was thinking we all vote absentee and, and, and copy, you know, uh, photocopy, go to where just a photocopier and photocopy it. And that way we have a hard copy of who we voted for. No, I that. agree. But how do we communicate with each other to then match those up with each other? I, I don't know. I mean, that's... Listen, your idea is really good, but they classically stuff the ballot box at the absentee because they've got a month or two to monkey with it, depending on the state. The real answer is exit polls everywhere to show that the numbers don't match up. If you got a 3% to 5% discrepancy, you know there's a fraud. But great points. Appreciate your call. I'm not shooting you down. We've got a war game every angle. The answer is a landslide, and Trump's already got a landslide. They're scared. That's why they're saying he's dropping out. He's dying. He murdered people. He's a demon because they're scared. Brad in Pennsylvania, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thanks, Alex. You're exactly right, and you're doing an excellent job of hitting home on what he needs to do to win. It's got to be a landslide, so they can't, so they can't rig it or they can't lie, and that's what happened in the RNC because they stole it from Ron Paul eight, eight years in a row, in my belief. And they, they, they got that pervert him. Kasich running around saying Trump came to him and said, "I'll make you the king." All lies. Kasich saying Ohio won't go for Trump. Everyone I talked to, everyone. I mean, I'm literally. It was like everyone in Ohio loved Trump. Black, white, old, young, Muslim, Christian. I mean, it was all Trump, Trump, Trump. It's crazy. I had Muslim cab drivers. I'd say, "You're a Muslim." Yes, I like Trump. They were all for Trump. They hate it. They hate Hillary. The point is, he says he's going to lose Ohio. Yeah, because you're going to try to steal it, you little arrogant, narcissistic, mental patient. I mean, look at Casey. He is a literal lunatic. They're all establishment hacks, and Hillary is floundering. You're exactly right. You pulled back the curtain. It's like the Wizard of Oz. She's got nothing. She's weak. She's spineless. They're, they've got nothing. Trump listen, listen, it. listen, listen. Leanne's out there doing days of interviews going, I can't find a Hillary. And I go, what is it, one out of ten? She goes, no, I can't find it. So I'm looking at hours of raw footage. I go, do a report. She's like, well, there's just hundreds. There, I mean, she finally did exit polls. It was eight out of ten. <laughs> but they, 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 no one supports her. It's it's an epic time, like you always say, Alex. It's it's this is globalism, Hillary and globalism against nationalism, Americana and, and Trump and patriotism. And this and people don't see the big picture. That's exactly what it is. And we got to stand up against against it now, or we're going to lose it forever. Absolutely. Anything else, sir? I love you, man. Keep up the great well, work. We love you. We're all in this together. It's just so good to talk to somebody that wants to fight this. So when you thank me, I'm thanking you. We're all, this is just crazy. People go, well, why aren't you for killing the cops? And I'm like, well, there's some bad cops, but I don't want to just randomly kill people. Really, you're for the establishment. Now, the establishment isn't the cop down the street. It's the foreign banks, people. Now, there was an organization randomly talking about going after globalists. I still would say they deserve a trial, but maybe I wouldn't be so upset. And I'm not. <laughs> I'm so sick of these people. I'm so sick of them just getting away with everything. It's so obvious what dirtbags they are. They have no morals. They have no compass. No wonder they run things. Because they just they'll, they'll do anything. And those of us that don't want power. I don't want to go bitch at a neighbor because their dog's doing something in my yard. Much less go fight some politician. But that's the problem. I'm more of a man than, than these people, but I don't want to exercise power over them. Well, you know what? You put too far. The sleeping giant is when real men say and real women say, game over. You want to fight? Now you're going to get one.
And they go, oh, give up. Be scared. It's like, oh, you don't understand. I'm not scared. I didn't fight you because I was asleep. I'm awake now. You want to go? Let's go. And we are going now, aren't we? And you can metaphysically feel me getting my hands around your little neck. Madeline Albright, when you said 500,000 dead Iraqi kids is a good price to pay for security in the Gulf as you took down one of the only non-radical Muslim groups so you could push for Saudi Arabia. Metaphysically, let me tell you a story about her. We were at Bilderberg 2008. Hillary and Obama are inside. The media is all, where's Obama? Where's Obama? They disappeared. Remember that in Virginia? And we're there. And he, she pulls in. They go, That's Madeline Albright. She's driving a, this little Little, little car, convertible, Porsche. She, huh. We heard she panicked from the Marines that were inside later and runs out screaming, wouldn't even speak because she saw a few protesters. That's who rules over us. A blood drinking, I mean, culturally, spiritually. Oh, yeah, dead children are good. Bomb Belgrade. And meanwhile, she can't handle 50 protesters when she drives by, panicking in fear. That's who we're fighting is this, this bucket of pus. Let's, thank you, Brad. Let's talk to Bobby in California. You're on the air. Yeah, no, nobody likes Hillary. Nobody's excited for her. You can't find anyone. Even the people that are voting for her over Trump uh, say it's, uh, or will admit that she's a phony. So I, I have an idea. Uh, uh, Hillary phony is a $3 bill contest. Whoever designs the best $3 bill and it can be passed, uh, you know, passed around everywhere. That's a great idea. We should have another one of the Lance Armstrong of politics. But Lance isn't that bad. He doesn't deserve to be compared to her, but people know who he is. She is the fraud. She is the fixer. What other? We should have a contest for the contest, like a $1,000 prize in a week to decide the best contest that's $100,000. Uh, and it's the mega viral campaign. What do you think we should do? I, just, I think whoever, you know, uh, designs the best $3 bill or, you know, the best ones, then people can print them out in stacks. They can hand them everywhere. Because, like I say, even the people that are voting for Hillary, they, they admit that she's a, a big phony. So just if you get that meme everywhere and just anyone that sees a $3 bill, oh, that's Hillary, phony, phony. And even get them, in, you know, not to try to pass them, but, like, just hand them out everywhere where it's like there's $3 bills everywhere. Hillary's on it. That's a great point. We should do it. Again, I'm sitting there with a camera and a bullhorn, and they go, that's Madeline Albright, and I watch her drive by. Like, she showed up not knowing anyone would be there. She's like, this is our secret meeting. What? And she's like, I mean, we're ruled over by a toad creature that, that, that literally brags about killing a half million kids. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, you have such courage to stand up against her. What, courage? I'm going to just lay down while this demon sucks the blood out of the country? I'm not doing it. Robin in the Virgin Islands, thanks for holding her on the air worldwide. Thanks so much, Alex. Love you. Listen, a couple of things I would love to see um, with the Trump campaign. Um, I remember when it was very evident that Trump was going to be the one with the most uh, votes, and immediately Saudi Arabia and China came out and said, oh, no, we can't have this. We can't trust him. Um, the economy will go to, you know, down the toilet, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, a bunch of other people jumped on. But I would love him, I would love for him to point out that on October the 1st, the Chinese yuan is coming on the market, the gold-backed um, renminbi. And um, they already have 60% of the world's economy signed up for that with another dozen-plus countries saying, yes, they will stop using the dollar. And my concern is that they're going to use Trump, you know, they're going to have some of these countries come out. And Absolutely. They could put him in and then claim the global collapse happened because of him, but people aren't that stupid. Just be done with the heavens fall. I appreciate your call. It's a great point. Thanks for calling, ma'am. Wish I could talk to you for an hour. I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., Lord willing, with the big weekday show. But let's put up on screen from DrudgeReport.com. It's also on Infowars.com. Hillary Clinton basically collapsing uh, as she goes upstairs having to be helped in. This is happening more and more. This is indicative. This is archetypal. This is a logo. This is a symbol uh, of the collapsing elite trying to put another corpse into power. And, you know, trying to shove this down our throat one more time. As Roger Stone said, go into the well one more time. We only lose by not resisting and speaking out. We win by taking action. I'm going to say great job to the crew, the listeners, the sponsors, the affiliates, and the good Lord above. I'll see you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, Infowars.com.